Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, if you're here, you probably have already seen my video talking about how I think that this camera here, the Sony ZV-1, is ideal. It's the best camera for what we're doing here. So uh, if you saw that and you think like, hey, that's the camera for me, before you get your hands on one of these, there's some things I should tell you. There are going to be a few accessories that you just kind of have to have. Uh, some of these are absolutely necessary, and some of them are going to be quality of life things. But uh, that's what I want to talk to you about today. So without any further ado, my name is Paul. Today's video is going to be about the top five accessories for your new Sony ZV-1. Oh man, I like this camera a lot, and when I got mine, I was thrilled with it. I mean, I was really... Yeah, really happy with what came to me, you know. But very quickly, I realized I couldn't use this camera because the very first accessory is something that you absolutely need to have. It's a memory card. In fact, I would say it's almost unfair to say this as an accessory because it is absolutely essential to making the camera work. ZV-1 has no internal storage, and so to make it work at all, you will have to add a memory card. When I was shopping for mine, I knew I was going to do 4K video, and so with that came large file sizes, and so I didn't want to run out of space on the memory card. So, when I picked my memory card, I went with something that I think was high speed and high capacity. It is 256 gigabytes of storage. Now, what does that translate to in some real world numbers? So earlier today, I shot 4K video, 60 seconds worth, 24 frames, and what I ended up with was a file that was 740 megabits for one minute. This is a 256 gigabyte card. So I've got like 340 minutes of recording just here. Tons, yeah, I'll never run out, right? But more importantly, I'll never need to think about not running out. I went with 256 gigabytes. Currently, that's going to cost you around 50 to 60 dollars. I think what was it a uh, 55.99 is the price I found on Amazon. I'll put a link below. Could you do fewer fewer gigabytes? Absolutely. I'm just telling you what I went with, and I have had no problems ever since. Here you are getting ready to do all these high frame rate photographs and and 4K video, and this is this is intense. And that brings us to number two batteries. Your ZV-1 is going to come with one of these. This is a Sony NPBX-1 battery. If you try to get a second one from Sony, it's going to cost you $50. If you go to somewhere like Amazon, this is going to cost you $38. And that's for one battery. I wanted to have a couple because I knew there were some things about the camera that would run out of battery, and so I didn't I didn't, but I didn't want to spend another $40. I've already spent $750 here and now another $50 on the, I mean, $800 now. I don't want to put another $40. Bucks. Jesus Christ, that's 5% of the cost of the camera. I didn't want to spend another 5% of the cost of the whole thing on this. But what I did find was a third party manufacturer called Numoa. Now, I know third-party batteries are never as good as the, the main battery, the, the Sony-branded one. But I was able to get three batteries from Numoa that come with little cases, plus a charger. Yeah, it plugs in USB-C or micro. And it came with a micro cord. Uh, I was able to get these three batteries plus the charger. Right now, it's $20.99 on Amazon. Uh, and this is this is very lightweight. This is small, so I feel like if I wanted to travel, go somewhere, take this with me, it's not going to take up a huge amount of space in my kit either. Now I have four batteries. I don't need to worry about running out of space. I got plenty of plenty of space on my memory card. I got plenty of juice to fill that thing up, and I have a nice tiny charger. Is it absolutely essential? No. You could just use that one battery over and over and over. But the whole waiting around for it to charge, I wasn't about to do that. Now you've got your memory card in the camera. Now you've got your battery in the camera. 
you're ready to start shooting, you go out and you make massive file sizes, right? Because that's, again, what this all comes back to. Uh, lots of pictures, lots of photos, lots of high-end video, slow motion video. You can do very slow motion video on this. Uh, the quality is terrible, but you can do like up to close to a thousand frames per second. What do you do with it, right? You've got 256 gigabytes on your card. I've always had good luck with SanDisk memory cards, so I went with SanDisk external storage. These little SSD drives, so no moving parts. Uh, they're somewhat ruggedized. They're water resistant. They're shock and vibration resistant um, and fairly affordable, all things being equal. This little 500 gigabyte one, right around 100 bucks. So now I'll tell you this. When I got into these, this was the best you could do. It was 550 megabytes read speed. They have improved these since then. Now they're up to 1050. So if you are shopping around and trying to find the best price on one of these, uh, on one of these drives, just be aware that there are two different versions and you, someone might, if you found an extraordinarily good price, you might be looking at the slower speed one. Now, I have been using the slower one of these pretty much the whole time because it's the one I got first. I offload my footage from the camera straight onto here, leave it plugged into my computer, and then I, like, I can edit straight off of this. I don't need to drag this footage onto the computer and then work with it and then save it into here. I've been able to store everything here and work with it. The 550 has been fast enough Premiere hasn't had any issues with it. I, everything has worked out fine for me. That's been my, ex my experience with the HP Omen, this SSD, and my 4K footage from the ZV-1. Okay, so now it brings us to number four. Uh, for what I'm doing here, camera on the tripod, which means I've got one of these little plate things on the bottom of it. Maybe you're using it with a gimbal. Again, you're going to have some sort of little plate that the camera attaches to so that it can do its thing, right? And when you need to take that footage, send it to your computer, or you need to change out that battery, you'll find that these plates, no matter pretty much what size they are, all obstruct the battery door, which is right here. All right? You can loosen this. You can spin around. doesn't matter what you do. I've, I've got several different size plates for different devices around here and they all obstruct this battery door that's it's frustrating at best right so the thing that i have found to help offset this is this little device right here this is a little bracket that uh mounts into your quarter 20 hole here on the bottom of the camera and then you end up with this just this little slim plate along the bottom. It is small enough and low profile enough that it does not add a lot of size to the camera because one of the things I do like about this is that it is small and tiny. It can fit in my pocket or my backpack or whatever, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's not uh, overly cumbersome to work with, but by adding this little bracket, you get more mounting points. For example, remember our problem on the, on the bottom with the bracket? You get nine more holes in the bottom to mount it in, and if you use the one, the row, all the way at the end there, now your battery door will open. You can get your memory card out. You can change your batteries out. <sighs> that transformative, really, just having this one $20 item attached to the bottom of my camera. Plus, as an added benefit, there is a uh, cold shoe right here on this end, so if you're using your, your shoe, your hot shoe on this side for, I don't know, a microphone or something, you could put a light on here. Um, if you are using, taking advantage of the fact that this camera knows when you're shooting in portrait as opposed to landscape, there's even a quarter 20 hole on this end, so you could mount it in a tripod or any sort of device to hold the camera this way. Uh, like I said, definitely, it's, it's not a must have item, but definitely quality of life. It's very much worth getting. And that brings me to the very last thing I wanna talk about with you today. 
So if you look here at the top of the camera, you have this lovely uh, three capsule microphone that they've gone to great length to design and make better and everything. And then right here, there's a little plastic cover because there's a hot shoe. Now, when you buy this camera, it comes with a little wind muff, a little dead cat, if you want to call it that, that covers the microphone and it clips in right here. Okay, it just slides in much as this little dust cover does. Now, my camera sits here on the tripod indoors. I wasn't really worried about this wind guard being in place. Uh, I don't want to say I lost it, because it's definitely here somewhere. But I, I can't deny I have misplaced it. Um, I went to go out a couple weeks ago, and son of a gun, I just couldn't find the damn thing anywhere. I hunted high and low. Could not find it. Next thing I know... I roll over to, to Sony's website to try and see, okay, I guess I'll just have to bite the bullet and buy another little cover thing. What could it possibly cost? How bad could it be? They use a third party called Encompass to sell the parts for the camera and the Sony windscreen. Uh, it's $32. And then you still got to pay to have that thing shipped to you too. Are you kidding me? It's a $750 camera. Again, this is... 5% of the cost of the camera is, well, maybe not 5, maybe like 4%, uh, is going to be this little fuzzy thing? Come on. So, disappointed to say the least, right? Uh, I moved on and checked Amazon, like you do, right? Uh, I have found that Small Rig makes this. This is basically a replacement and an improvement. It attaches to the camera in the same way right up here in the hot shoe, except now it contains a cold shoe mount right up in the top here, whereas the uh, Sony one slides into there just like that dust cover does and, and completely uses this spot. So then you can't mount anything. So now, uh, just as this bracket added a cold shoe, this fuzzy guard adds a cold shoe up here as well, or, or it keeps a shoe at least available. But it is a replacement for the original, and it only costs you $10 on Amazon. They're available and in stock, and if you have Prime, they ship for free. I got mine in like one day. And $10, I can choke down $10 a lot easier than $33 to replace this. And that's what I got today. I think those are your best, your five best accessories for the ZV-1. All told, you're in around 200 bucks to pick up these items. Absolute necessary, not all of them, but definitely worth having. I uh, hope this was helpful for you. If it was, hit the like button, subscribe to see more videos from me, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Cheerio.